Hello. Hello. Hello, teacher Hello. Christina. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you oh, too. Okay. It's evening, but I think I have poor connection. Just give me one moment, please. Really? So, uh, let's dive into the questions then, if you don't mind. That's okay. Cool. Totally. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, uh, teacher Christina. Okay, do I pronounce your name correctly? Christina? Yes, of course. Okay. Totally. Um, very good. So, teacher Christina, speaking of motivation, how can we motivate language learners? What do you think about this? Yes, that is a very good question. Thank you so much, Ms. Sam. I think, personally, personally speaking, that it is, um, it is a must rule that a learner himself should know his own aims in order to learn any language. Because if the learner himself isn't motivated and he doesn't have very clear understanding of where to go and why, I think that might be difficult for him to be motivated and to stay motivated during a long time. And the language journey takes a long time, of course. So I think the most suitable question would be when you start um, talking with your future learner or somebody asking you for tutorship or something, you have to ask why exactly do you need English? What for? Because uh, the answers might be different. Uh, somebody will need that for their work or for traveling abroad, which is very one stop. And others would say, oh, I just want to watch series in English or read books in English. And I think that the approach of studying and the approach of motivate, motivating student, students will, will be different um, because of the answer to this very question. Do you agree with me? Yes, totally correct. Of course, you know, uh, students. Yeah, and uh... I, yeah, so sorry. Yes, and I also would like to mention here that, you know, I have, for example, let's talk about my students. One is a boy, not a boy, adult, of course, but he needs English for, um, for increasing his salary, for uh, improving his working performance, and maybe for changing the position. So he has strict time limits, and also he has very clear vision of where to go, when, and he had strict deadlines. So he just says, Christina, please correct me all the time when giving a feedback. Uh, please tell me everything which is wrong because I want to know exactly when I do my, when, where I make my mistakes. And I have another student, a girl, also an adult, and she, she's very frustrated when she just came to me. She said, oh, I just don't know how to speak English. You know, I, I just can't do that totally. And I begin with uh, starting with questions. Like, why do you think so? And it, I discovered that she, has very, she had very bad experience, very frustrating experience at school back then when the teacher said, you know, you will never be able to talk. Uh, you will never be able to speak publicly. So these two students, they require Demotive. a very different, different type of motivation, of course. Exactly. Because with her, I'm just like very gent gentle, very soft. And I don't point out each and any mistake of hers, of course. So that is the answer. Yeah. Yeah, totally correct. You know, of course, we are dealing with humans, human beings, and I mean, human uh, human beings have you know um, emotional, you know, differences, as well as you know psychological differences, and you know, this is difficult. The background background is different. The aims are different of people, and of course, they would require a different approach. And interestingly, just before we started. I asked my followers, what do you think? Should a teacher be bossy or should a teacher be very kind and gentle and all of this stuff? And mostly people answered that they want kind and gentle, but they just DM me that they still want um, kind of a very confident mm -hmm. and um, person who, who would challenge them, you know, so that they would feel on the um, on the one hand, they would feel this challenge, and on the other hand, they would feel this, you know, um, 
I can grow, I can deal with that challenge. So what this is what they answered just now. Yeah. On my Instagram page, yeah. I see. Very good. Okay, so uh speaking of, you know, the different ages, what is the difference between young learners and adults? What do you think about it? Yeah, I just I I love this question. That's that's very, very good question. Yeah, you know, when I was um, back then, when I started my career as a teacher, uh, back then at the university, I worked with school children mostly, and that's all. And of course, now uh, when I teach online mostly, of course, I teach adults because they are, um, they just feel more comfortable with communication and all of this stuff, not having a personal contact. And it's difficult for children to study online, uh, I suppose. Uh, I just don't have this experience for now. But back then, um, my, my minor students, my little students were just brilliant and great because they were like a white sheet of paper, you know? They didn't have any bad memories of learning experience at all, not only languages. So, they didn't have any frustration feeling, any feeling that, oh, you know, I would be judged by someone. They just, they were interested in the process. They are just like, oh, wow, I can do that. It's interesting to me. And one of my students, I just remember that so, so, so much. She, um, we started our um, lessons when she was seven years old and she performed so well that uh, she became much, um, much more educated in English than all the other people at her class. And um, she started uh, to, um, uh, to complete all the exercises that her teacher uh, gave very fast. And the teacher was like, what? Nasta, why are you so fast? Why are you doing this? She, she, says, she said like, but I just, I've written that already. I have these answers. How come? But, you know, I use this beautiful handwriting and my, uh, my speed is very fast. And she said, no, you, don't ha you, you cannot use this uh, handwriting. You have to use you know, print, uh, printed letters, block letters. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. They, they can't do that because the average uh, pupils, uh, they were very slow in their speed. And nice. my student, she was quite fast and brilliant. Uh, that's good to know that her mother talked to the English teacher and she just changed the class, uh, changed the grade, and she just started to go to the upper grade uh, only at English classes. But still, it's so, it's so cool, it's so amazing that uh, little children, they just don't have this, that fear or frustration. They just, exactly. they just go, go on and do that, you know? So, exactly. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That's right. Uh, next question is, what are the probable, probable problems of students while they are studying and learning? Huh. And that can be our answer in this question. But of course, uh, talking about adults, that there is very, very much psychological factor, of course, because when an adult uh, starts learning any new language, um, he feels very uncomfortable because he has his adult thoughts and he wants to share his adult thoughts, of course, right. but he has very limited vocabulary and very limited grammar constructions. And he feels like, oh, I'm so stupid. I cannot do that. But of course, totally he can. He just needs time, time to pass. And this unconfidence might lead to, as far as I'm concerned, that might lead to um, maybe un unwillingness uh, to continue this work because they want very fast results, given it very, um, very, very little time, you know? And also, as far as I thought, um, it might be the problem when, um, the pro when the person doesn't know exactly where he is. So he's not quite sure about his level and he's not quite sure where to go. So maybe this might be a problem because I think that learners can use maybe this um, 
CFRI, as far as I remember, stuff. So they have these grades, um, the unified system of levels, yes, like A1 and C2, so the six level grades. And they have very nice um, uh, website, um, uh, very un uni unified uh, European criteria on um, measure of your level. So maybe it is advisable to use those criteria before you go learning so you would know where to start and where to go and like the timing of how much it would take to uh, move from one level to another so mm -hmm. i think that might be the solution cool very nice it is quite new okay the next question is um what sort of material would you recommend them to use for example, very cliche, like books, apps, websites. Is mm -hmm, there any specific mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, cool platform that yes, you I have, can course, suggest them? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, sorry. sorry, yes, of course I have, of course. But it would totally depend on the situation of a very particular learner. But as for just my preferences, just what I find useful for myself, what I like, um, might be all the Cambridge resources, of course. They have uh, different types of materials. If uh, we would uh, talk about books, they have this grammar in use, very cool stuff. They have vocabulary in use, also very cool stuff, rated books for different levels. Pronunciation in use. So basically for all the skills that you need, they have these different types of materials of books, which I highly recommend uh, to use. And yeah, also I have this, yes, uh, online dictionaries are good. I use Collins, Macmillan's, I think they are pretty common, of course, because if you don't need, oh, that is uh, an interesting thing, which I've noticed from my students, if they do not know how to read their new word um, and they are not quite sure, most of them will not go to the dictionary to look up uh, how to pronounce the word, how to just maybe listen to it, maybe see the examples of um, the usage of this word, but they will just read it as they think it would be okay. And going from there, we have a problem because instead of like cucumber, um, a lot of Russians would have cucumber, or uh, mother instead of mother. Mother is quite okay, but still. So they just have this idea of how to read that, and uh, they are lazy to to discover the, the actual pronunciation or usage. And I highly encourage everyone: if you if you find this uh, new word, please go to the dictionary. Please check this listen um, uh, button and just know exactly how, how it works. Also, uh, I found this useful for me and for my students uh, to combine uh, different materials, like you have the book and you have the audio book and you can combine them so you, you would read what is written here on the pages and you, at the same time, you would listen to the story and that would, mm, you will not commit this mistake, you will not yeah, make this mistake of reading maybe incorrectly of the word. Also talking about YouTube channels, I'm a huge YouTube lover. Yeah, and I, yes, and that's why also um, uh, I just noted some very useful channels. I would say Lucy English, English with Lucy, something like that. Yeah, everybody knows her, she has like 4 million followers, so that's a lot. And uh, I also love Jack from Two Fluency Channel. He is also great. He gives grammar. Not a lot of people um, on the YouTube who gives good grammar stuff, as far as I can say. I love BBC Learning English, but this one is quite academical. So not a lot of students might be interested actually in this stuff, but also it, it, it can work. Mm, and I love Learn English with TV series because they just make these amazing um, exercises about very actual stuff, like serious, friends, how I met your mother, Sherlock, all of this stuff. 
and they explain to you the vocabulary, the grammar, which is used in the particular episodes. They also have very nice um, uh, exercises about talk shows, like yeah. a LM talk show. I, I love that. Yeah, and uh, it's not an academic style. So it's just real life experience, which can be used for your learning purposes. And I think that's wonderful. So, yeah. and TED Talks, of course. TED Talks, sorry. Yeah. TED Talks, sure. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, very nice. Okay, you know, uh, very repetitive question. Grammar or vocabulary, which one is uh, really important or outweighs the other one and why? And also, how can learners improve their grammar and vocabulary? And speaking and reading and pronunciation and all of this stuff. Oh, of course, we will, yeah. we will go to those questions too. <laughs> yes. So... I think um, being a Russian, I can say that traditionally in Russia um, at schools, mostly um, we, um, we are concerned about grammar. Mm -hmm. And that is not right from my perspective. I should say that grammar is like, okay, it is like a car, a mechanism, which can go somewhere, of course it can, but without fuel, without a driver, it just wouldn't work. It just would be as where, where it is, right? So, of course, you need some basic grammar. Um, without it, you cannot um, share your thoughts or go into very deep conversation, of course. But if you know like 10, 20, 30, 100 words and no grammar at all, I think you will survive. Of course, now I'm in Thailand and they have very difficult language, I should say. I I'm not familiar with this type of um, symbols and all of this stuff. It's very different from the European. So yes, I think you understand what I mean because of your course. language is also very specific. And I just know a few words. I just know how they sound. And I'm totally okay with them. I do not any grammar at all. I can just say kapun ka or savadika and people will understand what I mean. So if you know like 100 words and no grammar at all, it's much, much better than when you know a lot of grammar. But you cannot use them. Use it yeah. because you don't, you don't have the material where you can use it. So basically when I teach my students, I try not to go deeper into the constructions themselves. Like, so you know, it is called passive voice. Who cares how is it called if you can use it? I do not know how is it called in my own language, but I can use it. So that is the point. That is yeah. the idea of communication and language is the instrument. No, it's, yeah, it's the tool. It's the tool. It's not the um, science. It's not the like piano playing which should be very very good so that everybody would listen to you now it's just for two people to communicate do you agree with me exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. i would definitely yeah have to say that you know vocabulary outweighs grammar because as you said all we need as a tourist or let's say the, the beginner speakers basically we need vocabulary to survive and you know maintain the life that we have or we are looking for uh but grammar of course is also important we cannot you know detach it from language yes. both of them are important but what you said is totally correct you know i think they call it as survival language so survival yeah, yeah. words or something like that yeah we need to yes of course you wouldn't be a top manager or i don't know gazprom or lukoil just come to my mind or maybe i don't know apple you wouldn't be the ceo of apple without the grammar right but you can still go to the united states and you will survive you will you know order food buy stuff so you will be totally okay you can talk to strangers nothing nothing uh, bad is here without very deep grammar you know exactly exactly yeah so next question is how did you personally learn english yeah, okay. I've started 
very, very far ago, of course, uh, back there in school, yeah. And um, I didn't stop there because um, I was, uh, when I was studying uh, at university, I was, um, I was studying a legal career, my, so doing my legal studies. And at the same time, I obtained the degree of an interpreter. So I have a high education with the language, but not as a teacher, but as an interpreter. And afterwards, I didn't also stop there. I went further and I decided to enroll to my LLM program, which is for lawyers, but it was in English. Uh, it was in a Moscow, in Moscow, in Moscow based American law center, difficult. So all my studies, uh, they were in English. And uh, also, I studied abroad. I went to summer camps back there, back, uh, back to school. I went to summer camps to Malta. They have very, there were uh, many, many, many programs, different types of programs for business learners, for school, children, for adults. So they are very famous for these programs. And that also helps, I think. Yeah. And I, can, I cannot say that I'm done. I continue every day. I can say I continue. So what do you think? Do you continue? <laughs> of course. Yeah, every single day. I'm learning something new, definitely, definitely. Cool, very nice. Okay, uh, so is it possible to learn multiple languages at the same time? And would you recommend that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I might not be an expert with that. Uh, so I have learned, yeah, I, I've learned English, of course, and back then I learned German it was a failure and French and with French I think I had A2 B, B1 level back then and uh, it was rather good I was able to communicate with French people when I was in France so I think I did pretty well but I would say that it is difficult to study two completely new languages simultaneously because your brain might be confused especially if those languages are quite similar um like you know european languages they are quite similar so if you are not a bilingual from your birth because bilinguals they have this ability to just pick up to observe language just as as it is so it might be very easy for them but for an average person it could be a challenge and you'd better be okay with your a2 at least a2 b1 level somewhere in one language and then afterwards you can continue with another language that's my opinion very nice yeah totally correct totally correct and uh, okay my favorite question yes. how so, can learners improve their speaking uh, abilities so yes that's my favorite also because each and every learner just ask me oh how can i speak how can i speak okay let me give you an analogy when i first uh, came here i when i moved to thailand it was this february just before coronavirus and all of this stuff so i didn't have any understanding of how to ride a bike i just haven't had this experience before so i was a complete zero back then in february and um, I watched a couple of YouTube videos on how to do that. I also watched my boyfriend doing this riding a bike. Then I also, I've read something about this, of course. And I was, yeah, my boyfriend explained me in details how to do that. But I still didn't have any chance to practice. So back then, I didn't know how to do that. I just was a complete zero. Then I started and I at least, it took me at least 20, 25 hours to know a little bit of what I am doing exactly because you know, you are on the road, everyone is here and that is Asia. It's not a European style of driving here, right? And not a very European style of roads. 
So my brain was very confused and frustrated and I have to be concentrated on this writing each and every second of doing this. And after 20, 25 hours, I at least felt confident about this. Like, okay, Christina, you can do it. You will survive. Nothing bad will happen. You can. So when you just first start uh, learning English and you have to make this jump from never, 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 never speaking and actually speaking, wait until 20, 25 hours of in involved practice and you will be okay. You will survive and continue doing that because that's how it works. You just continue. It's not a complex um, studies. It's not geometry, architecture, or biology. It's just a language for communicating. So just go and communicate. I think that is not a secret. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of course, every person has his or her you know, own method. And yeah. yeah, style, totally nice. I should say that, yes, if you would like to speak, yeah, and you don't have maybe a partner or a teacher. Yes, of course, you can uh, hire a teacher. Of course, that is number one ability. Everybody can do that. But if you don't have uh, any chance, any possibility uh, to hire a teacher, you can record yourself. You can listen to somebody, to some podcasts, or there is a lot of stuff on the internet now. You can listen to it and you can record yourself. Everybody has a phone. Right? Yeah. right. Even even here, people might live in very poor constructions, buildings, but they all have these phones. So please use it. Just record yourself and listen to it. Does it sound like on the tape? Does it sound like it's just what you have heard from the audio? And okay, afterwards you you could correct yourself, of course. You can maybe join um, many any any speaking club. There is a lot of this stuff on the internet now. Or maybe you can go just on Tinder or any other app which people use to, to, to meet each other, to communicate. That is what everybody wants. Everybody wants, sorry. Everybody wants communication. A person to, to talk to, to share your ideas. So just go there. Not, not to practice, but to be a friend, to be a person, to, to, to just, you know, to share your ideas, your comments. So that is a good way, I think. You just don't have to go to each and every teacher online and ask, oh, can you teach me for free? No, that is not the way, of course. <laughs> so, but you can find people there online. Yeah. We are all there. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> sure, we have technology, so we need to use it, actually. Of course. Okay, the next question is accent or pronunciation. What do you think about this? Yes. Pronunciation, I should say. <laughs> Pronunciation is in used books or they have very nice book, three or three. I love that. That for elementary students and uh, elementary level students, but that is gorgeous book. Just awesome just to go uh, for, for this book. Pronunciation. Accent can, we can live without any accent. That is not our native language uh, we have a lot of accents uh, in our native language russia is it's quite big you know so we have very very different types of uh, accents in our own country and of course they have two but as far as the research uh, shows uh, i've read one but i don't remember the name now only five percent of english communication is communication between a native and a native other 95% of English communication all over the world is non-native to non-native or, okay, a native and a non-native. So just feel comfortable with, if you pronounce the word correctly, that is enough, that is okay. And if English learners would, would be interested in American accent and how to maybe improve their American accent, I would totally recommend uh, Rachel, Rachel's accent. There is also a channel uh, yeah, on YouTube. And I love, yes, I love accents English with Hadaris. She's also gorgeous. I just love her stuff. Yeah. Great. Great. Very good. Okay. Speaking of different accents, which one would you prefer? 
like American English or American. British English? Yeah, American, totally. Yeah, the, the content which I use is mostly from the United States now. And there, there is, there, that is still the same language. Feel, feel free, feel, be okay with that. So, but, okay, I love Colin Ford, maybe, and his, I don't know, films. He's a very, very, very lovely man, and his accent is uh, quite okay. But just I, I tend to communicate with Americans mostly. I've um, studied uh, at American Center in Moscow, and I talk to American professors and listen to them. So that is how I picked up my accent. Because back, back then at school, my teachers, they were mostly with their British accent, but it was strange. Yeah, I, I wouldn't like to remember that. Uh, so our school program was based on typical British stuff. But now mostly the content is American, I should say. So you'd better work on understanding all of this stuff. As far as I, yeah, I'm concerned, yeah. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, definitely correct. Uh, okay, is it possible to learn English without going abroad? Yeah, totally, yes. Totally okay. Everybody has um, internet uh, or telephones or any, any, any other English speaking environment. Uh, English is an obligatory subject at schools now, so I am totally sure. And I also uh, put this question uh, on my Instagram page and mostly people answered like, yeah, sure, you can do that without going abroad. Yes, if you go abroad, it will um, maybe just bump you up. But if you, if you just go abroad and you don't learn, chances that you will speak are like zero. If you learn plus you are going abroad, then you are doing great. So I think, yeah, we can live without going abroad. Yeah. Yes, sure, you know. Internet uh, connects people and everything, you know, uh, is possible via Internet. Of course. Definitely. Do, by the way, have you, have you visited uh, native countries like Australia, Great Britain, the United States? Unfortunately, not so yet. So, me neither. Me neither. No. Yeah, me neither. But still, I'm quite okay with that. Yeah, of course. People, people that tend to understand me quite well. And, uh, yeah. They normally tell me that, you know, you're so quite, you're so well, doing well. So that's of okay, course. you can do that. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is doable. And uh, how long will it take for a person to learn every necessary element of language to speak properly, to speak it properly? Yes, you know, that, that is a tricky question. Actually, the answer is, it depends. And there are a lot of factors. First of all, what is your aim? As, for, as, as I said it, what is your aim? Do you want to communicate for buying bread at supermarket? Or do you want to become a top manager of a, an international company? You would probably need very different level of English for these two aims. Or maybe your aim is just to watch, I don't know, friends. Uh, or, no, your aim is not watching friends. You want to read Shakespeare or you want to read poems of Byron. I don't know. They use very different level of English. So knowing your aim and knowing where you are exactly, um, there, then you can understand uh, where to go and how long would it take. As, mm. as already I've uh, told about this, I've consulted CEFR, yeah? So that is the Common European Framework of Re Reference for Languages. It's very difficult still. It is this table of levels mm. and uh, what skills um, mm, we have at each level. They describe it in very particular details and they say so like for going to a a2 level it would take uh, about 100 hours 100 hours of practice so uh, yeah. you understand that from 100 to up to 200 they, they say and going further will take you longer 
So I can say that, okay, coming back to this question, you used this expression, each and any element yeah, of uh, the language. Let's be honest. I do not know each and any element of my own language, mm -hmm. but I tend to use it uh, quite successfully for communication. I am quite fluent and quite accurate in my expressions, but I still might make mistakes in my own language, you know? So that totally depends what um, the, the, the number of hours that you would need depend on from where do you go and where do you go? What would you use your language for? If you're just interested in numbers, just go and check this uh, CEFR guidelines. They, they can help. So that would be the answer to this. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. You are correct again. And we have the final question. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Technology and education. What do you think about you know, uh, the integration of these two different elements or whatever, do you think that it is, it is a useful integration or it is harmful? What do you think about it? I totally should say that, yeah, we are now talking via Zoom, via th this stuff. And I also work as an online teacher because I mostly teach my Russian students. Uh, so they are in Moscow, I'm here in Thailand, and we still somehow um, are able to find our way through this language journey. So yes, from this um, perspective, technologies are super, super duper cool okay yes but okay there is but on the other hand if there is very very much technology um, surrounding you so that might be a distractive factor of yeah. course if um, you cannot concentrate on your learning on your homework on your listening anything that you you are doing so if you have to check your emails all the time or your messages on your social networks, yeah, it might, might, might be harsh and your progress will not be as, uh, as um, rapid as it might be. So we have to divide. When, uh, when we discuss just technology as helping us in this language journey, then it is okay, but don't be too much distracted by them. And also what I've noticed, um, one of my students, she's just going deeper and deeper and deeper because of the internet, because she can Google and she's just go to one link, then go to another, then go to, she totally, at maybe 15 links, she, she totally forgets and what I was looking for, but she's like, okay, they, has, they have this gerund and complex object. Oh my God, I will never learn this language. And I'm like, relax, you have to stop. At some point, that is enough information. Don't be overwhelmed with this information, you know? So yeah, we totally need to divide. When it is an instrument, okay, but don't overuse it. So that would be the answer. Fantastic. Very good. So you were uh, basically thinking about the, you know, the balance. We have to maintain that balance so that we can be safe in learning and also some other stuff. Very, very yeah. nice. Very, very nice. Thank you. Okay. So I think that they are, that we've gone through practically all of the questions. Yes, exactly. So uh, it was really lovely talking to you. Thank you very much for you. accepting my invitation. Of course, thank you for inviting me. <laughs> my pleasure. Uh, let's say goodbye to our audience. Yes. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs> Bye from Thailand. Bye from Thailand. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so nice to meet you, teacher uh, Christina. I hope we thank can you. talk later on some other, uh, you know, topics. Maybe you can, yeah. you can uh, come up with some other topics. Maybe I can come up with some other topics in the future. Yeah, yeah possible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much again for coming Thank and you. Know, joining my... Thank you. Okay. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Have a good time. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.